Clara was extremely quiet. That's the first thing. She was very quiet. She spoke quietly, and she, she was reserved and very dignified, uh, which Joe wasn't. Uh, Joe was very rambunctious, and uh, uh, Clara was very proper, but Clara was extremely warm. Joe was warm in a professional kind of way, and he was warm to me, but hardly anyone else. He, he didn't give a damn uh, if you were an opera singer. Yes, sure, he, at, at certain points when he got frustrated, he, he kind of like a name, but Clara could have cared less about all of that. Uh, Clara had very bad cataracts, and she'd had surgery, and she had very thick glasses. She always dressed in a complete white nurse's outfit, which was a little off-putting, except there was no standard. It wasn't like going in, you know, going from one Pilates studio where all the teachers are in very tight-fitting clothes and muscles and all that, and, you know, they look like they're ready to work out. Clara was in a nurse's outfit, so she had this white long dress, white stockings, white buck shoes with little nurse-type heels on them, you know, maybe an inch high. And uh, she would stand around. She never really taught, bent over and taught a student the way Joe would do. Joe would come over and put his hands on you and work with you. When Clara put her hands on you, that was, you were special, let me tell you. Uh, she pushed you forward. She was a very strong, teeny little skinny person, but very strong. And she had an uncanny ear, very terrible vision. But she would know when you were pushing the machine incorrectly or unbalanced. Now, you think that's, and she could come from across the room and come up to you like that and say no or something. and you try to figure out what went wrong. The, just to give you an example, the, the uh, uh, carriage or whatever, the platform that goes back and forth, you guys have got it for years now with several wheels in different directions. So the carriage almost, not almost, actually has to go back and forth straight in the track on the track, it, it has no choice. Uh, so it can't go sideways, it, it, it has to keep the clearance between it and the frame, constant the way the wheels are. And if the wheels wear down, you can even adjust the wheels to make it that much. Joe had these four commercial uh, ca casters on it, I mean, uh, whatever you call those. And if you didn't push the carriage evenly, it would tilt a teeny bit and get jammed or it'd squeak going down. That little squeak, that was when you were off just a little, your left leg was pushing a little harder than your right, was very important to Joe. He, what he was all about was getting all of your body to work equally. So. If you had to push with both legs, they had to work absolutely evenly. Uh, your shoulders, your arms, he was very, very conscious of that. So I don't think he purposely designed it to screw you up when you got a little off balance, but it did. And so you were, you push the carriage and it'd squeak or worse, it'd jam. And Clara, if she was in the, she'd be over there in a second. All right, now the, that's a little about Clara's uh, uh, involvement with the studio. In terms of the relationship with Joe, I, I really, you know, with, I've opened a couple of lectures with the statement that I know you're all here to hear about Joe's sex life. And of course, everyone laughs and they think that's very funny. But the point is, I don't, I don't know the first thing about it. Uh, they slept in separate beds next to each other, but not connected. Uh, uh, they would never see any affection between the two of them, except at Joe's 80th birthday party, uh, which I was at. Uh, she she had his 
her arm through his, which, which was sort of like, oh, that's nice. But I had my arm through, when he'd walk on the street with you. That was a very European custom. But she had an incredible admiration, you could see, for him and respect for him. But he was the king. <laughs>